We're here with Paul Dreesen, who is a senior policy advisor for CORE, which is the Congress of Racial Equality. And Paul spoke today at the second uh, annual uh, Lahiti pre-conference rally here in uh, A&T, North Carolina University. Now, um, Paul, I was hoping, uh, first of all, if you could talk to us a little bit about CORE. What kind of organization is that? CORE is one of the oldest civil rights organizations and human rights organizations in the United States, going all the way back to 1942. It was very involved in all those early struggles. When you hear about Mississippi burning and you hear about the three civil rights workers who were murdered in Mississippi, those were working for CORE at that time. CORE feels it has largely won those old civil rights battles, and now it is up to the black community, the white community of the United States to rise up together and realize that our futures are in our own hands, that we don't have the institutional barriers any longer to education and voting and so forth, but there are new civil and human rights battles that need to be fought. Right. Now, Paul, you actually um, spoke on, I guess, a, a particularly controversial topic, if we will uh, call that today, um, with regards to sort of the, the use of DDT um, in the eradication of malaria. And I say controversial because certainly it's more, or it has become a mainstream notion that using DDT would cause more harm than good. So my first question for you is I wanted to talk about um, what your thoughts are on the, the mixed approach between prevention and treatment, and let's just start from there. Okay. Let me start by saying that DDT is not as controversial as it used to be. The New York Times supports it, Forbes magazine, the Chicago Sun-Times, Michael Crichton, all sorts of people, the World Health Organization, USAID, President Bush and his malaria initiative all support the use now of DDT. But the question is often, do you work to prevent malaria or do you work to treat it? And in reality, you need to do both, and you need every single weapon available. So DDT is one of a number of insecticides that can be used and must be used. You also need larvicides, you need better education, sanitation, new drugs, vaccine hopefully down the road a little bit. Uh, many different approaches all working together in order to first stop as much malaria, prevent it from happening in the first place, keep the mosquitoes away from people, kill mosquitoes, do whatever it takes to stop people from getting malaria in the first place, and then those who still get it, you want to be able to treat so that you don't have an African child dying every 30 seconds from a treatable and preventable disease. And I think that's, um, you know, when I talk about uh, the issue, I guess, being, you know, controversial and, and relating it to, you know, opinions that people have had on the use of, of pesticides and where we are today, I think what's interesting is that the debate seems to have been focused on um, whether or not you know, DDT is good or bad. And in fact, one of the things that you had pointed out was, you know, sort of the use of DDT versus not using DDT. But it seems to me, perhaps, that one of the things that's missing from the debate is not so much whether or not DDT's, DDT pesticide is good or bad, but what can we do to offset what, what might be some of the negative effects from using a pesticide like DDT. Because as with anything, and you, you know, we, we talked about this as well, even with regards to certain medications that may have negative effects, right? Well, there also is an opportunity to come up with solutions to deal with those side effects. And I guess I wanted to get your comments on the possibility of that becoming more of the debate, or if you could even give us some insight as to, you know, what solutions can, you know, can be come up with or have been made available for dealing with side effects of a pesticide such as DDT? Okay. Good question, Michelle. Uh, just like when you're taking Advil, you may need four tablets for arthritis, which is what I take. Um, but there are side effects from that. So you take it with caution. You don't use more than you need. You don't take six or eight. And you take it with food and milk. Same with DDT or any other insecticide. You use it with care. Uh, with DDT, 
it's sprayed on the inside walls of homes and on the eaves. It's not sprayed in the environment anymore. And even when it was sprayed everywhere in the United States, most of the supposed effects of DDT that they talk about, the thinned bird egg shells, the uh, other harms of the environment, were not really taking place. The bird populations were actually increasing at the time, not decreasing. But there's been a mythology about it. That doesn't mean with DDT or any other insecticides that you don't exercise due care. You follow the guidelines. You don't use more than you need. You use it where you're supposed to, the way you're supposed to. You have trained people who do it. And you watch carefully in the storage, the transportation, the spraying, every aspect of those insecticides. Bottom line is, if you use them carefully, you save lives. If you don't lose them, use the insecticides, you lose millions of lives. Right. Now, um, Paul, with um, the, the president's um, uh, malaria initiative and organizations such as the MMV and even some of the grassroots organizations and, and that type of thing, with regards to, I guess, the issue of malaria um, outside of North America in um, de underdeveloped countries becoming more and more something that, I guess, countries with the financial ability to to aid these countries, where are you hoping some of this funding is going to, I guess, play itself out? Well, I'm hoping there will be more contributions in funding to the President's Malaria Initiative, the World Health Organization's programs, the various other UN programs. More contributions from the Gates Foundation, not just in the long term uh, vaccine research or drug research, but in some of the near-term things that can start saving lives now. On the other hand, there's also an opportunity here for many environmental organizations who've been spending millions and millions of dollars attacking DDT. They could step forward and contribute money instead of attacking to helping solve the problem, proactive. becoming proactive. If they're uncomfortable supporting insecticides, they can put some of their billions of dollars in annual revenue to bed nets. But I think they can also support a lot of aspects of a very comprehensive malaria control strategy. The other part of it that's very important to keep in mind is that as these programs are undertaken, the countries where malaria is making half the workforce sick and unable to work on any given day will have more wealth. People who can work, people will go to Africa and invest where right now they don't want to because how do you have a workforce that's healthy enough to do the job day after day if everybody's coming down with malaria? So this will change the dynamics of these countries. More tourists will go there. Caribbean got rid of its malaria. It's now got a billion dollar a year tourism business. Liberia, Uganda, many other African countries can do likewise. And with all the natural resources and the brilliant, hard-working, industrious people those countries have, they'll have an opportunity to bring more and more outside investors to build their own companies up, just as they're doing right now in India and China and other parts of the world. It's outside investment and internal investment. People in the countries will invest in their countries instead of someplace else. Wonderful, Paul. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Paul Dreesen from the Congress of Racial Equality.